Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. Uh, so it's Saturday and we're having a good time with our thumbs ups and thumbs downs. Uh, this is the uh, second uh, podcast on the subject. Um, with me is, of course, um, co-founder of The Gaggle, uh, Peter Lavelle, also a host of Artie's uh, talk show, Crosstalk. Uh, uh, so it's been a busy week, Peter. What were your what was your thumbs up? My thumbs up was diplomacy. Diplomacy. After about two weeks of uh, conflict in Nagorno Karabakh, um, um, the, the the Kremlin made a few calls and finally said, "Knock it off. Get on an airplane and get to Moscow." And as far as I know, and this we talked about this yesterday, I don't see that Mr. Erdogan is going to be there. And so it's going to be a Russian diplomacy, which of course. Uh, Russia knows both countries intimately. The, there are so many people of uh, Mazari ascent in Russia, obviously of Armenia. Um, and so um, to make sure the, the, the conflict doesn't escalate, uh, they've been called uh, to uh, Moscow to sit down. I, I put out a picture on Facebook yesterday. It was a big table and they were well spread. Not, And it wasn't about social distancing. OK, um, you know. This is the um, this is the way it should be, and this is the way it used to be. Um, instead of dictating uh, terms and conditions, um, what you need to do is you have to bring people together. And it's also an interesting commentary on the Wilsonian Wiss uh, um, um, covenant that we got after the First World War, because you know what we have with the conflict in the Gorno Karabakh and with the two um, conflicting parties, Azerbaijan and Armenia, is, you know, you have the issue of self-determination and sanctity of borders. And that's why the Wissonian settlement is such a disaster, because they, can't, they don't work in tandem. They're not um, um, uh, adjacent to each other. They're, in many ways, they're opposites of each other. And that is what, for the last 100 years, as we think in terms of the nation state, we've had this enormous tension of what which you should stress, the sanctity of borders or self-determination. Does Nagorno-Karabakh have a case for um, self-determination? Well, of course, a lot of people do. The Kurds do, okay. But um, at, at what expense, okay? And is that the expense of the sanctity of borders? Yeah, it is, okay. So what do you prioritize? And it's an impossible thing to do. What happens is self-determination works out if you have a big backer on the international stage, that can right. help, okay? But it has nothing to do with principles, it has everything to do with power. And so because these, the, in the Wissonian um, um, system of uh, stressing these two at the same time, what's the only thing you need, well, what's the only one, what's the only element you should use, should I stress, to, 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 to find um, some kind of um, space in between? It's a secret, diplomacy, and that's what we're having right now. Well, I think that's the, that is indeed a, an important issue about um, self-determination. Uh, self-determination um, cannot work uh, if um, you know, you, you're up against the self-determination of uh, someone else. And what happens is that there is a great deal of hypocrisy um, in all of this. The, the Western powers, uh, favored the breakup of the USSR and they favored the breakup of Yugoslavia. They did it in the name of self-determination, but of course, as anybody uh, with any knowledge of history would have known, well, if you break up along the lines of Republican borders, you are going to have huge minorities within those Republican borders who don't want to be a part of that uh, republic. Uh, it was one thing when they were part of a, a larger multinational federation, but they don't wish to be a minority in somebody else's nation state because then they are a minority and then they may well be subject to a persecution, uh, discrimination, uh, hostile actions, uh, ethnic cleansing, whatever. And the Western powers really didn't care about that. I mean, so we saw this um, uh, in, in the case of the USSR when they just simply accepted the, the, the ridiculous, uh, disorderly breakup um, initiated by Boris Yeltsin. And the same thing in, in Yugoslavia, when they say, oh yeah, Croats must have uh, self-determination. Well, what about the huge Serbian minority in Croatia? Oh, well, the hell with them. They better accept these borders. 
And then, they're, oh, yeah, Bosnia must have uh, self determination. Well, what about the huge Serbian minority, a third of the population who don't want to be a part of independent Bosnia? Well, they better shut up or we, we're going to bomb them. So, yes, un un unfortunately, it's as, as you say, you know, you have self determination if you have a powerful backer, and the other side, unfortunately, doesn't have a powerful backer. Well, and, and the interesting thing, too, is I'm glad you brought up the issue of the dissolution, the forced dissolution of, of Yugoslavia and uh, the, the case of the Soviet Union, because you, you it wasn't that long before that you had the whole case of the Versailles settlement. And what, what you just said happened on a massive scale in all of the new countries created in Eastern Europe. And you know what happened? The Second World War. OK, so um, in this yeah, case here, right. because because Azerbaijan and Armenia uh, have close relations and good relations with Moscow, I think the diplomatic uh, channel uh, will um, um, come to fruition here. Um, but the problem is here is it's not going to resolve the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. Folks, that's why it's called a frozen conflict. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. Um, my uh, thumbs up um, is kind of similar to what I mentioned earlier, is um, Trump's attitude toward the uh, virus. I, I thought that uh, while the media were shrieking and tearing their hair out when they saw him walk out on his two feet from the hospital, I thought that was an impressive and inspiring sight. Uh, you don't want people to uh, al allow illness to dominate their lives. So when he made that broadcast, uh, well, podcast or whatever you call it, um, uh, once he got back to the White House and said, don't let COVID rule your life, I think that was very important. And I, I think you know, that, that, that is how we should live our lives. Now, of course, you know, we're not all so fortunate and you know, you know, people do succumb to illness and, and you know, die and so on, and that's no, no fault of theirs. But nonetheless, one should have a positive a uh, brave uh, attitude uh, towards illness. And so when he walked out on his own two feet, you know, he had nobody helping him, uh, he had no wheelchair, and he gave the two thumbs up signs to everybody. Uh, I thought, yeah, that's not only is that a leader of men, but that's, uh, you know, that's, that's what humans should aspire to. You know, wh you whatever know what you have, you know, you should, you should walk out bravely. Don't, don't cower uh, in, in terror uh, at home. You know what they, they, this um, this strategy of of uh, scaremongering and terrorizing the population. If Joe Biden is elected on November third, he will be a victim of that. Where's the president? Oh, we're worried about COVID. Okay, we haven't seen him for two weeks. We're just protecting the president. Okay, okay. Right. He's an undisclosed uh, um, location right now. Um, you know, there's. We need a special vaccine. For, <laughs> it could go on and on and on. Okay, and yeah. all. See, it used to be when you and I grew up, it was all national security. Now it's uh, a health security. Okay, but it's the same paradigm. It's the same paradigm. Yeah. Control. Okay. All right. Yes. My uh, thumbs down. Nancy Pelosi and her ridiculous idea to call this congressional commission <laughs> to investigate the Twenty yes. Fifth Amendment. You know what? What's going to happen? You know, every single. It's already been actually. Uh, there, uh, some former uh, intelligence. I think it was former CIA officials um, in the during the 2016 election said that all presidential candidates should be vetted. Oh, like vet Bernie Sanders or AOC. You know, and I'm I'm looking on the other side of the aisle, okay? Because they'll do it to all of us, okay? So Nancy, what a harebrained idea, okay? Maybe we should we should uh, it, it should be extended to maybe we should have to uh, vet uh, speakers of the house, okay? Also, see, th this is just such a ridiculous path to go down. It, it's not going to go anywhere, okay? Um, like I said, I, I I believe that they'll they'll um, uh, wrap this thing up really quick and then they'll use it as some kind of impeachment, even if Trump loses. I think that's how spite. But it's interesting that she's. Um, yes, that's right. But it's interesting that she's. Um, using this very divisive, uh, almost incendiary uh, issue uh, with three weeks to go before an election. So you have uh, the Democrats are supposedly, they're going to be the unifying uh, party, uh, as opposed to Trump, who is a very divisive person. You can't get more divisive than this, uh, suggesting that uh, uh, Trump 
is not uh, mentally competent uh, to be president. Apart from anything else, Trump has done nothing since his illness that is untypical. That's how Trump is. There's no evidence that he's doing anything. We know he's he wouldn't okay. be doing it. He's back on Twitter. Yeah. You know, he's giving two-hour interviews to um, Rush Limbaugh. He's on Sean Hannity. He's on Tucker Carlson. <laughs> That's Trump. That's who he is. He's, he's giving him, doing a rally at, at the White House today, another rally tomorrow. <laughs> you know, this is Trump. I mean, if he was... I don't know, walk, running around naked uh, uh, in, in the, on the South Law, and then you say, yeah, there's clearly something wrong. But no, there's no, no evidence whatsoever that he's doing anything uh, unusual. You know, George, once this kind of venom is interjected into political discourse, it's hard to get rid of it. You know, Nancy Pelosi is, is polluting the body politic with this very poisonous politics. And it's going to be very, you know, because there's a lot of people, uh, uh, conservatives and people on the right and populists on the right, they're not going to forget this here. You know, and this is what it, it's all about in Washington is, is payback. It's about personal destruction. Remarkably, it's almost never about policy, okay? So this is just opening up a can of worms that is just, it's gonna be almost impossible to, uh, to shut away. Because, you know, it, the next time someone comes in, oh, we're we gonna get our commission on the 25th Amendment, okay? It'll be like a ritual. When, and it, it was supposed to be such an, an extraordinary thing to invoke. And now it's like having a cup of coffee in the morning. Sad, right? No, no, that, that's exactly right. Um, I have a couple of small um, uh, thumbs down. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, former CIA director John Brennan uh, tweeted out uh, to, uh, you know, he was invoking John Lennon's uh, Imagine, and he said, "Well, you know, imagine uh, Trump out and Navalny, president of Russia. You know, what a what a wonderful place the world would be." And you thought of, you know, this is Brennan's mentality, that it's up to him to decide who's out as president of the United States and who's in as president of Russia, as if somehow that's within the purview of the uh, CIA director. You know where he gets it from? Remember, what did he do before he was head of uh, the CIA? He was Obama's drone czar. Drone czar. Man, he got exactly. to decide who lived and who died. Uh, and that's, that's the kind right, of, exactly. this is... This is psychotic, okay? He is, he is psychotic. He, he absolutely is psychotic. It's, it's clear that the, uh, from everything he's, he's done and, and what they did in, during the Obama administration in trying to prevent uh, Trump taking power, I mean, it's clearly uh, psychotic. Uh, so another thumb down was the, um, the Mathematical Association of America. Now, uh, we've already had Scientific American uh, publishing an editorial uh, urging people not to vote for Trump. Now we've had the New England Journal of Medicine also uh, issuing an editorial urging people to vote for Biden. And we had the Mathematical Association of America. These are people who are, uh, <laughs> who are supposedly contemplating the most esoteric uh, most issues. Smart people. Exactly. Um, they condemned, first of all, uh, Trump for denouncing critical race theory. He says, critical race theory is an established social science inquiry which is grounded in decades of scholarship. It is misguided to reduce this theory to the race blaming of white people. Uh, and so it goes on and on denouncing uh, Trump. And then he comes up with this um, uh, bizarre thing of saying that, um, uh, well, uh, was, uh, well uh, uh, something like, well, math mathematics is created by humans and therefore carries uh, human biases and its uh, reaching potential in mathematics relies upon the academy and higher education engaging in critical, challenging and uncomfortable conversations about race and racism. That's all nonsense. That's garbage, yes. all of it. it all of it is garbage. It is garbage. And it's like you're saying, well, mathematics is human. Well, I suppose so. On the other hand, I mean, if if every single human were wiped out uh, tomorrow, two plus um, two would still be four. Two, two plus two would equal four. Exactly. And a quadratic equation would still only there's only still be only one solution to the quadrat <laughs> to a quadratic equation. So, you know, to say it's, you know, mathematicians should really know better. The, uh, but, but if it shows all human beings disappeared, we probably wouldn't have derivatives on Wall Street. 
There's some upside. No, that, okay. That, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. But it's a, it's an interesting how um, this whole uh, Trump derangement syndrome has infected, supposedly, the the sort of the cold, hard natural sciences. You know, forget the social sciences. We you know we know what they would do. But mathematicians, doctors, scientists. I mean, these these are people you 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 expect you know cool, rational, well, you know, uh, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of, you know, um, 1948 Soviet Union in the physics department, and they start their lecture. Well, as Lenin said, and Marx said, okay, you know. That's it. That's exactly what that's it is. Exactly. Okay. The, the, this is, and in fact, it, that's what they, yeah, the, that's right, because you remember when... This is called it's cultural Marxism. You can read about it. The Frankfurt School. Okay, it's all out there. Okay, this is nothing new. Okay, it's cultural Marxism, and 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 it's 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 vile. It's vile. That's right. No, you're absolutely right. In fact, in the Soviet Union, they did promote scientists who had the most crackpot theories. Uh, but because it seemed in, in conformity with Marxist teaching, well, that, Lusen, Lusenko, <laughs> they got right. Lusenko, Lusenko is that, that's what I was thinking of. Lusenko. But, you know, he was a charlatan. And, you know, and the Soviet Union basically fired him once they realized that, of course, he was a charlatan. But he was promoted by both Stalin and Khrushchev <laughs> with all these nonsensical theories. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's where, that's where uh, we're going, coming to now. Well, oh, well, the interesting thing is that, the, you know, you can't, what, what, the, what the left in America is trying to do in, in, in the Western world is to have red and expert at the same time, a biased expert. And that's exactly where we are. That's right. That's it. Well, thank you very much, Peter. Um, remember, uh, next Saturday will be another bout of um, thumbs up and thumb down. Uh, so if you like The Gaggle, please like, share and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.